Hi everyone, so good to see all of you. Thank you for joining me. Before I forget, all of these videos have a playlist attached in the description. And if you want to put some tunes on whenever we start, just press play. You're going to have to do it on a different device, most likely. So today we're going to do a yin practice. Um, other yogas focus primarily on physical practice, athletic movements, much like your vinyasa, your power yoga, even your Bikram, your 26 and 2. While yin and other restorative poses create space to relax and breathe. Now in yin, we often hold the poses anywhere between two to five minutes. So we need support in a lot of those poses so we can let go of tension and just focus on our breath. If you take this class in a studio, oftentimes they'll have these big bolsters, like huge dense pillows, and then blocks to help support you. I own one block and no bolsters. So I had to go around my home and collect some things that are gonna support me in this practice and I realized way mats make really good homemade bolsters. Just fold them up and roll them up and they really support it because they are dense, unlike like a soft pillow that's just gonna squish underneath you. You want something that's really stable underneath you. I also found a nice big blanket, which I folded in half lengthwise and rolled up as well, just like the way mat. So why don't you go around your house, put me on pause, and see if you can collect some things now, just in case you do need them. It all depends on your mobility. You know, sometimes you really need to stack some things up, and other times you don't need it at all. But you definitely want them nearby, and that way you don't have to go try and find something during the middle of class when you're nice and relaxed. So Raj and I will be here. Just take a minute, wander around your home. If you didn't know, this is Raja. He's my yoga cat. Ever since we've been in quarantine, he is loving on the hot room. So he'll be joining us today or wandering about. All right, everybody back. All right, so we are gonna start in a comfortable seat, whatever that is for you. It can be crisscross. You can sit on a block if this feels like a lot for your knees and your hips and so lift you up off the floor. You can also kneel. We're gonna start with alternate nostril breathing. It's a really nice way to settle in, calm your mind. So I want you to pick out your ring finger and your thumb. Gently close your right nostril with your thumb and breathe in with your left. Deep breath. Pause. Gently close your left nostril and breathe out through your right. Inhale through your right. Pause. Close the right. Exhale through your left. Inhale through your left. Pause, close the left. Exhale through your right. Inhale through your right. Close. Exhale through your left. Do that a few more times on your own. One more. On your next exhale, just gently drop the arms, relax with your eyes closed and take a few breaths. Deeply in the back of the lungs.
gently open your eyes. And we're gonna get ready for our first pose. Um, today's yin is gonna focus primarily on your hips. And we're gonna start with half pigeon. I'm gonna face the bottom of my mat just to show how to support yourself if you've never done this before. So your half pigeon, typically you'll set up in either downward facing dog or in a tabletop position. So either way, you wanna take your right knee behind your right wrist and to the outside of your mat. Your left leg goes straight down beside you. And this is where you look to see what kind of support you need. If your hip is up high, you can take a block if you have one or a rolled up towel. So anything that works for you, rolled up towel, rolled up um, bath robe even, you can even unroll them a little bit, you know, if you just need a little bit of support underneath there. And then the next, you wanna take what you need underneath you on your chest. So I'm gonna take my way mat on the floor and then put my blanket right on top of it. I'm gonna see how that feels. Now you may not need any of this. You may be fine without any props at all. And lastly, something that feels good if you're up in the air, you can take a block or a towel and put it right underneath your forehead. Now make your final adjustments somewhere where you can rest and breathe. And because we hold these poses minutes at a time, your teacher sets a timer and that way we have them held the same time on both sides if we're doing lefts and rights. So if you happen to look and I'm moving about, I'm just gonna read a few things to you, make sure the timer's going. But I want you to try to close your eyes and settle in. Meditation is like going underwater, getting behind the noise. So important to clear space, not only in your body, but your mind. So start to notice your breath. Take a long, slow, deep breath in. Hold it for a moment and then slowly exhale it out. Just allow any tension to melt away as you gradually relax more and more deeply with each breath. Most of us taking this class practice a lot of the yang, but it's so important to include this yin style of yoga. In order for us to feel whole, we 
really need to take that pause. Find that stillness. Nothing to force. Just breathe. Take another long, slow, deep breath in. Hold it. And then exhale. Empty your lungs completely. Slowly exit the pose. You may have to remove the supports you've created. And I want you to stretch your right leg out behind you, either in tabletop, you can flex the toes and stretch it out, or you can put it up into your down dog, open the hip, just putting the pieces back together. There's no right or wrong way. Just move mindfully, especially through these transitions. And I'm gonna go into the other side. I'm switching just so you can see. So make sure your supports are nearby. So after you set up the pose, you can just pull them in behind you. So I'm gonna set it up. This time I'll set it up in tabletop. So you're gonna take your left knee and make sure you draw the left knee behind your wrist and out towards Raja, out towards the outside of your mat, the left side of your mat. And this is where you decide what kind of support you need on this side. It can be very different from right to left sides. So you may need to put a block or rolled up towel underneath that left hip. And once that feels good, or maybe you unroll the towel a little bit, you need less of support. Then you draw what you need in underneath your chest. So I'm gonna stay with what I had before. I may be able to take something out halfway through, you know, just, Start where you're at without judgment, go from there. So do your final adjustments, wiggle about a little bit, find what you need, maybe take that block or towel underneath your forehead again. Each time you exhale, think about just clearing space. Everything that happens is processed and stored by the mind, whether relevant or not, it just takes it in. Engaging in this practice gives your mind the time to separate the useful information from the trash. So staying in these poses 
for a longer period of time creates these gaps in your mind. Your mind then fills these gaps with events that occurred over time. Things you might have ignored, maybe buried, maybe brought back. These events, you're now open to reflect on them with an objective mind. As we quiet the mind more, your mind now has the ability to separate these suppressed emotions and finally let go. Find peace within yourself, healing your mind. healing your body. next breath even deeper. Just hold it for a moment without a struggle, just a pause, and then let it go. Just observe drifting into a state of deep relaxation. Breathing slowly, Breathing gently. Slowly make your way out of that pose. And again, there's no right or wrong way. You can stretch the left leg back out behind you, or you can go up into your downward facing dog. Give that hip a good stir. All right, our next pose, Supta Baddha Konasana. So I would get two of your way mats or two of your towels ready for this one in case you need them. You're gonna lie down on your back. So I'm gonna take two of my rolled up way mats. If you have blocks, two blocks will do the job as well. And again, you might not need the support at all. So you have the soles of your feet together and your knees open to the side. And then you can see what kind of support you need underneath each of your thighs. And you might not need anything. So once you've figured out what kind of support you need, find a place to rest your arms. You can bring them out on the floor with your palms up. You can put one on your belly and one on your heart. Another option is just rest them on your thighs. So take a few moments to do your final adjustments and just settle in, let the floor hold you up.
when we're anxious or tense, we get drawn out of balance. When you're calm and collected is where you find your balance. And when we struggle ineffectively, learning nothing, distracted, accomplishing little. In your stillness, you can catch a glimpse of the intersection of energy, matter, awareness, and letting go. We create space. Create space, create freedom. and freedom that you find happiness. to let the muscles go in your forehead and your temples. And imagine that feeling of relaxation spreading down all the way through your eyes, your cheeks. Let your jaw soften. all the tension go. Allow this peaceful feeling to flow down your neck, into your shoulders, soothing and relaxing. Follow the same peaceful feeling through your arms, fingers. Your body relaxes and your thoughts become weightless. That soothing feeling. Start to relax your hips and your back. side of your chest, smooth out the muscles in your chest and down through your belly. And down through your thighs, your knees, your calves, soothing your ankles, feet and your toes. On your next exhale, gently pull the knees up to your chest and roll around the lower back a little bit. Just holding onto the knees or the shins and just roll the lower back out. Now you can come onto your side or gently roll up to a seated position for our next pose will be half saddle. So some of you are familiar with fixed firm hero's pose. This will be doing one leg at a time. And I'm going to use one way mat and the blanket. And again, depending on mobility, you may not need any of these, you may need more. Make sure they're close by so you can pull them in behind you when you need them. 
So I'm stacking them up right behind my lower back. And I'm going to come into the fixed firm position. A lot of us know this one, sitting right on your heels. And the same way you set up this one, same way you set up fixed firm, except we're going to do it with one leg. So I want you to take your left leg out and then take your right heel out from underneath your tush. Probably should have done the other side. I'll do the example for you, but keep the left leg out. So you want to take your heel out from underneath you, so you're sitting on your two sit bones with the left leg out in front. Okay. So once you've got yourself settled, let's see how much support we're going to need. So I'm going to pull my way mat and my blanket in close to my lower back, right against my lower back, in fact, and I'm just lay back down on them. I had to pull it out a little bit so my head has some support. Making sure your heel is touching the hip just like you would in fixed firm. So find your final adjustments. Maybe you turn your palms up or down. And just settle in. A great stretch in the front of the right quad, into the ankle. As you breathe, see if you can make your exhales longer than your inhales. longer we practice yoga and meditation, begin to notice your own energy, where you hold tension, how others affect you. Here is where we can practice. This is our laboratory. How we can take that pause between action, reaction, our response. Take another breath on this side. No rush. After your exhale, slowly bring yourself up and stretch the right leg out in front of you. Maybe stretching it out is enough. Maybe you want to gently bounce it a little bit. Roll it around. Maybe even a little windshield wiper. And then we'll get ready to set up the other side. And again, the other side may be very different. You can start in your fixed firm position if you are more familiar with that, or you can just tuck your left heel behind you and send the right leg out. And again, go through your steps. Get that heel really close to your hip, sitting down on the floor, and then start to see what you need to pull in behind you. Maybe more, maybe less.
Make sure you're properly supported. Decide what arm position is going to feel good here. Maybe begin in your face again and follow that sensation of deep relaxation through your body. Some sensations may come up. Just observe. Like cloud wisps in the sky. So you can take a breath and just let them float by. We hold these passive poses. We can work more into our fascial system and the deep tissues of the body. The less dense and tight our bodies become as we age, movement and stretching hydrate the fascia and literally can help slow the aging process. So lengthening tight tissues can be uncomfortable. When you start to notice sensations like this in the body, just use this time to focus on your breath. large part of this practice in many yogas is the focus of our breath. When we experience discomfort, our bodies can naturally become tense. In this practice, teaches us to reroute, reroute the mind, slow the heart rate when we begin to experience discomfort. On your next exhale, slowly exit the pose. Take the left heel out, and again, maybe stretching it out is enough. Maybe you want to do a gentle bounce, or that windshield wiper action might have felt good for you. Our next pose is going to be held a little shorter, just a transition pose here. So I want you to take Probably something similar that you did in the Supta Baddha Konasana. Most of you know this pose. You probably just don't know the name of it. Rebound. 
especially if you've ever had any knee issues or been on a massage. You probably propped your legs up like this. So you want to put them underneath your, I don't know, close to your knee, underneath the knee. You decide what feels best. And then just lie down on your back. And just enjoy that slight elevation of the lower limbs. Again, find a comfortable place for your arms. And on that first deep inhale, hold it for a moment. And then let it go. Soften around your eyes. Smooth out your forehead. I'm going to ask you to bring your knees up to the chest again gently and do that little roll with the lower back. Hold it one way and then the other. You can roll on to your side or come up to a seat and we'll prepare for your next pose. This one's going to be frog and it does take some time to set up if you're familiar with it. Go right ahead. I'm just going to go through some of the support that you may or may not need if you've never done this before. So frog pose is oldie but a goodie, really gets into the groin and the hips. Now a lot of times people have some sensitivity underneath their knees and this would be a good time to either put a rolled up little towel underneath or what's very simple, sorry Raj, fold your mat and give your knee a little more padding right there. And when you set up your frog, you want your knee to have a 90 degree angle. So make sure you're looking down, right to the right, and a 90 degree angle at your ankle as well. So really flex the five toes back towards your shin, and you have that 90 degree, and then check the other side. Again, you can roll the mat up. Now, if this is painful, knees or ankles, it's not just sensation, it's definitely pain, then touch your toes, and that should usually relieve that. Now let's set up our support. I'm going to do what I did earlier for my pigeon. I'm going to put my way mat and my blankie on top. I'm going to lay my belly right on there. Again, if you came out of the pose, double check your limbs and make sure they're at the right angles. What you want to make sure is that your hips are in the same plane as your knees and your hips haven't come forward ahead of the knees. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on the stretch. And you'll notice as you start to settle into this pose, you're gonna to wanna to open the knees more, which is a good thing, or settle the hips back more towards your heel. Also a good thing. Just try not to get away from it by leaning the body away from the knees. And also the other option you can do, forehead on a block or a rolled up towel. And again, you might need not need any of this. I have students that are flat on the floor so you set it up, make your final adjustments, and then take a deep breath and settle in.
you put the playlist in, on, there was a song based on one of my favorite stories. And even if you're not listening to the playlist, I'm going to tell you the story. It's called The Bowl of Light. And just breathe, close your eyes. The song was based on a story from Hawaii called The Bowl of Light. In Hawaiian culture, every being that comes into this world is born with a bowl of light. The light is what we call our mana, our spiritual energy. It is like our life breath. The Hawaiians believe that the goal of our life is to grow our bowl of light to its fullest potential. On the other hand, if one does something hurtful or wrong, a stone goes into our bowl. The light and the bowl cannot exist in the same place. So if we do enough hurtful things, all of our light goes out and we are left with a bowl of stones. But the Hawaiians say that at any time, any time, we can flip our bowl upside down and start again. One more breath. Notice we have tension and just exhale right into that. Slowly make your way out of the pose. Touching your toes behind you. If you have the ankles flexed can sometimes make it a little easier to come out. Come on to your back and just bring the knees in or maybe stretch the legs out. Whatever is going to feel good right now. Our next pose is going to be legs up the wall, and you don't need a wall. If you'd like to put your legs up against a wall while you're home, you're welcome to do so. So in this pose, it feels pretty good sometimes if you have a block, or you could do a rolled up towel too, and put it right underneath your pelvis. So 
you might have to move it around a bit to find the right spot. And then send the legs up. And this should be very effortless once you have them up there. You want to relax the knees and the ankles and the toes. You can relax your arms down by your side or over your head. And the other option is you can add your arms, waterfall. The limbs just float effortlessly up in the air. Big bones just settling into the joints of the hips and the shoulders. On your next exhale, gently pull out the block or the towel and bring the knees in again. Roll them around a little bit. And our last pose will be another set of rebound. So take what you did before Support behind the knees, up underneath the thighs a little. Find a place of complete relaxation. Your arms can go wide. And just let your limbs go heavy. Take a deep breath and let that soothing sensation again follow it down through your whole body. It's 
starting from the crown of your head all the way down, relaxing your face inside of your jaw. down through your shoulders, softening your fingers. Each inhale, each exhale, creating more of a soothing sensation down through your lower limbs, your hips, the front of the legs, the back of the legs, your feet, and your toes. everything you need, your courage, your strength, your compassion, and your love. Everything you need is already within you. Stay here as long as you wish. Thank you so much for joining me and sharing your practice. Until next time, stay healthy. Namaste.